It's hard to believe that the Porsche Macan is now five years old. Since it was launched, Porsche went on to sell about 350,000 units of this mid-sized SUV globally, accounting for a whopping 40% of the company's total sales. It is by far and away the fastest selling Porsche model in history. And at this very juncture, it certainly seems like the strategy of positioning the Macan as its most affordable model in the lineup is paying off very, very handsomely. What I have right next to me is the 2019 Porsche Macan facelift in its base form. From the outset, it's hard to tell that this model is actually the facelifted one, but changes include new headlights with 4-point LED DRLs, revised lower bumper with integrated intakes and turn indicators, as well as new tail lights with the same 4-point LED design and a long, continuous LED strip. This design trait is shared with the latest Panamera, the Cayenne, as well as the new 911. Some people may find it to divide opinion, but I think if you catch it at certain angles, it will look all right. Plus, the look has grown on me, but let us know what you think. Do you like the way it looks? Comment below. Since this is still a first generation product, the cabin remains largely unchanged. However, the biggest change here is the fitment of a new head unit. This is a 10.9 inch widescreen touchscreen head unit. And before you ask, yes, it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Previously, the air vents were on the sides of the screen, but because you know, you've got a wider screen now, the air vents have been moved down here and the uh, controls have been arranged in the single row layout. And I think in terms of design, this is very nicely executed. Elsewhere, things are pretty much the same and the build quality is still top-notch with all the buttons and switch gears being very tactile to the touch and uh, this is a mark of really good quality. However, this center stack with all the number of controls and buttons you get does feel a little bit old school. I mean, especially when compared to Porsche's newer line of cars. For those of you planning to buy the Macan, well, good news for you because this facelift now comes with the premium package as standard. So it adds on a total of nine accessories worth close to 27,000 ringgit, uh, with the three biggest one being, you know, the 14-way powered seats, both surround system, as well as park assist, which comprises a uh, front and rear camera for, you know, all your parking uh, shenanigans. But all that comes at no added cost, so you still pay 455,000 ringgit. It's just that this number of accessories, they get thrown in for free, essentially. There's no change to the interior space here, so the dimensions remain exactly the same as before, including the 500 liter boot space, which expands to 1500 liters with the seats folded down. In general, the cabin and the boot space of the Macan, they're both slightly smaller than the Audi Q5, despite sharing the same MLB platform. But you should also keep in mind that the Macan is slightly shorter in terms of wheelbase and is narrower overall. But you know, enough talk, let's take this thing for a drive. This Macan is powered by a 2-litre inline-four turbocharged petrol engine, making 252 PS and 370 newton meters of torque. All that power is sent to all four wheels via a 7-speed PDK dual-clutch transmission. Yes, you must be thinking, hey, that is exactly the same recipe as the Audi Q5. Uh, well, you're right, but this guy has a famous Stuttgart crest. So while the two cars, the Q5 and the Macan, are fundamentally the same, the Porsche Macan just feels much more special to drive. In normal mode, the throttle needs a little bit more coaxing to get the car moving, so it may feel underwhelming to drive at first. And this is a trait that is not typical of a Porsche. However, all that changes with a flick of a switch. In sport mode, the throttle, transmission, and the suspension, they all get amped up to give you the best possible result. And frankly speaking, sports mode 
is where I would leave the Macan in at all times because this is where the car really comes to life both in the corners and just generally it feels more eager to drive. The 0 to 100 time for the base Macan is 6.7 seconds but if you choose to go with the optional sports chrono pack which by the way comes with a stopwatch on the center of the dash as well as a drive selector dial here on the four o'clock position of the steering wheel that's going to bring the sprint time down to 6.5 seconds. The suspension is not quite as sophisticated as the third generation Porsche Cayenne but it doesn't really need it because it doesn't have to fight that much weight in the corners. However, having said that, you can also choose uh, the air suspension with Porsche Active Suspension Management which this guy has but uh, be warned it's a 13,000 ringgit option but if you ask me, it is money well spent. It's hard to believe that the Porsche Macan is actually a first generation product because the car feels so well put together, it's so well sorted in the driving department and I can safely say that it is the best in class in terms of handling. As for ride quality, I am certain that there are more comfortable SUVs out there but the combination of MLB platform plus Porsche's special suspension and chassis tuning make the Macan feel more athletic and confident, especially through these corners instead of fidgety and nervous. Grip levels are phenomenal to say the least, no thanks to huge 21 inch wheels Oh, which by the way is the largest size wheels that you can opt for and uh, just be warned it costs well over 20,000 ringgit depending on the uh, wheel design But yeah, back to grip level, it is simply amazing because you've got the combination of all-wheel drive system, mixed rear tires, you've got fatter wheels at the back and um, Porsche's proprietary traction management system just makes the car stick to the road and drive like it's on rails. So, all in all, I find that this is a brilliant car to drive even with the base 2-litre engine. Some people may find it underwhelming to drive because, you know, it's a 2-litre engine, but I can definitely see myself live with it. However, for 455,000 ringgit, I find it sorely lacking in the safety department. There's no blind spot information system, there's no adaptive cruise control, and there's not even AEB or Autonomous Emergency Braking as standard. I would understand that, you know, if it's a sports car, I would give it a pass, but this is a family car. And if the latest 911 has stuff like AEB, ACC, as well as night vision mode, and wet mode, why can't a family car like the Macan have it? I mean, it's a family car. If those things don't concern you, which I think it should, then the Macan drives home a very emotive proposition. If you do choose to get it, then the Macan marks a truly exciting start to your journey in the world of heavenly Porsche. Oh, while you're at it, be sure to take the Porsche Sports Exhaust System because I guarantee that is one thing you will not regret. My name is Matthew, thank you so much for watching, I will catch you in the next one. Peace!